Hello everybody and welcome to What Would Jane Do? And as you can see, this is a very special podcast because Zoe and I are standing in Bath outside one of the baths here. It's the smaller one called the Hot Bath and we have brought our podcast to Jane's well, I'm not going to say her favourite city, but certainly a city she loved and wrote about. Though, of course, she also had some sad times here. But we are having fun today and we're going to think about the theme of what would Jane do about a festival in her honour? Because we're here as part of the Jane Austen Festival Bath. So, Zoe, what do you think Jane would have thought about a festival in Bath in her honour? I think to begin with, she would have thought it was a great embarrassing fuss and what a lot of hullabaloo and where could she hide. But then after a while, I think she would have been truly proud and then very curious. And she would have wanted to know what's everybody saying about my Lizzie Bennet? Um, Has anyone spotted Mr. Darcy? And to just see and hear people's views on her lovely characters and the she would have been fascinated by all the ramifications of where they've gone you know it's just incredible but I think she'd have enjoyed herself in the end especially at the ball that was last night <laughs> yes. yeah so we're going to walk around some of her favorite sites and uh, have a little think what she would make of them now in the 21st century so as you um, if you're watching this you can see that we're now standing outside the pump room the scene famous for many Jane Austen adaptations where people would go and take the waters and exchange gossip it was really a sort of social hub do you think Jane Austen would recognize it as it is today I don't think so especially the idea of it being not just a place for health and relaxation and restorative um, powers but as somewhere now seen as a tourist attraction like when you used to get to go and visit the big Pemberley mansion you know and the housekeeper would show you round now you can have a tour of the baths and the pump rooms I, I think that would seem very pe- peculiar to her that it had an, an entertainment value of a different sort I think she'd also be shocked about not knowing anybody there because of course Bath was a small society even though there were lots of visitors and you were supposed to sort of be able to eyeball each other when you and sort of have a look. Um, it's also another interesting place that uh, it still has the ancient Roman baths underneath mm. so there's a mm. great sense of history there which I think she mm. would have enjoyed and it's probably mm. better presented than it was yes, in her day that's so true. I think she would have really that's liked true. that. And also didn't you say there was a tea room there? there I think is. she would enjoy a slice of cake and a cup of tea yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. and I watch the world go by. I think they have like orchestras and afternoon tea oh, and things. Lovely. Well mm. there's certainly a lot more of the world going by than there would have been in her yeah. day so many more people to observe. I think a visit, she would have enjoyed a visit. Now we've moved round to the other side of the pump room with the view of the Abbey behind us. The Abbey here of course looks pretty much exactly like it would in Jane's day. It was famous for the amount of glass to to wall because it's got a wonderful feeling of um, light inside. And you can see the entrance to the pump room on this side. I think, Zoe, that actually Jane would recognise this area pretty much. Um, It's not much changed here and I think that would be very pleasing for her because if we did bring her to the 21st century, I think Mm -hmm. she would have a bit of a culture shock. Do you think there have been musicians in her day playing outside and maybe some street hawkers and, you know, do you think this would have been bustling again with entertainers or do you think... Definitely. So Mm. a little bit prior to Jane's time, one of the most famous uh, music directors in Bath was a man called William Herschel who went on to be William Herschel, the king's astronomer, the man who discovered Uranus. Wow. Uh, And his sister, Caroline Herschel, it's one of my little, my my personal loves is this story. He and um, his brother, other brother and Caroline were musicians here and Caroline was trained up to be an opera singer by her brother. And then he was talent spotted whilst on the streets of Bath with his handmade, homemade, telescope and a man called Dr Watson (laughs) came along and said can I look through your telescope and said this is better than the one we've got at the Royal Observatory and sort of he got sponsorship for making more telescopes for people and then he discovered through his superior telescope lots of things no one had ever seen before and became an astronomer and discovered things like binary stars and all sorts of things. Um, amazing. An amazing stargazer. But Caroline herself 
is the first professional woman scientist and she's my personal so did she hero. help him and record things she and did she was a data um, recorder but she also was her did her own stargazing wow. she changed the way data was recorded so she mm-hmm. wasn't just like a passive mm-hmm. you know no she changed it uh, and produced her own books and she found eight comets all on her own I love this story and does um, she carry on when he died she carry on not so much on the astronomy and, though she okay. did train up his son John Herschel okay. who was the lead astronomer in the next generation who went to South Africa Cape Town to record the southern hemisphere which had never been wow. recorded before and whilst John and family were in South Africa a young uh, botanist by the name of Charles Darwin called in on them on the Beagle so all these people Amazing. interlinked. There's only about five people really in history. I love that. <laughs> they, they, so and they all good. came through Bath. I anyway, so this uh, Caroline Herschel is like a contemporary. She has a longer lifespan. It sort of envelopes around Jane's mm. life. Mm. But I like to think of her as another mm. version of non-traditional women at Stepping the time. Out in different roles. Yeah. And actually doing their thing. Not everybody got married, you know. No. <laughs> Um, no. Some of them became amazing novelists and some of them became the first um, professional woman scientist and got a, a gold medal from the Royal Society of Astronomers. Incredible. Um, there you go. Wow. So Just in you can spot, imagine William and Caroline Herschel playing in the pump room to entertain those who came to take the waters. So here we are at the circus, which is... Well, as it sounds, it's a circus, so it's a whole circle of houses built during the 18th century, a sort of, you know, where the very highest of high society would have chosen to take their house for the bath season. So looking at this now, we've got lots of cars here, Zoe, but mm-hmm. otherwise it's pretty much unchanged. Where do you think um, Jane Austen would think about the festival now in Bath when we no longer have that sense of the high society the you know and the working classes this is quite a good representation mm. of how things have changed mm. um, you're not particularly high society if you live here you have to be rich but you're <laughs> probably you're probably running an Airbnb maybe I don't know or maybe you're a uh, lawyer having your offices here I can imagine that mm. but um, the festival itself has no sense of there being a high society it's just anyone who likes Jane Austen mm. I think the promenade at the beginning, when mm. on the very first Saturday of the festival, when the f- streets are filled with everybody dressed in their finery, yeah. the different Spencers and the gentlemen in their long coats, I think that's when the buildings really come to life and that sort of ambiance that those costumes and the buildings create, the colour of the stone, the shape of the fenestration, the lovely details and the columns, I think all of that then on that day becomes so evocative yeah. of the period. You can really imagine them walking around here then can't you i think she'd also quite like the egalitarian nature of it as well Definitely. i mean Definitely. it's not it's not the most diverse crowd who like jane austen really who get it to bath because mm. you've got to have a certain amount of finances to get here mm. um but i think she'd have enjoyed it's a everybody welcome yes um yes you don't have a community you don't have to be introduced to somebody to talk to them no you can (laughs) wear your homemade spencer that's absolutely fine yeah Uh, i think that is the sense of community she might have looked down at some of our needlework Mm. she would have but yeah and you didn't have shop bought then did you no yes so mm, so i'm sure you need all work from us she might have enjoyed that though you can imagine (laughs) the searing letter home yes they were dressed in that (laughs) but we've we've been showing bare shoulders or any ankles because she would definitely have called us out for that as well yeah so we'd have to have our right petticoats and the right type of sleeve yeah um but definitely on that day i think is when the buildings really come back to life anyway so here's the lovely circle circle and we're now going to go to the assembly rooms okay so what would Jane do at the festival definitely come here this is the assembly rooms where they had a ball last night you were telling me and during the day you can come here for dancing lessons so do you think Jane would have been joining in the dancing at certain stages of her life different stages so when she was 18 you know a bit later in her 20s definitely and she'd have wanted to dance the whole night and, mm. and then celebrate how late she'd stayed. Yeah. She was very excited when she stayed the whole time. But when she was older, what do you think? Maybe. I think, yeah, I think, I think she might have enjoyed watching. 
definitely watching. You can imagine sipping. that would have been... She used to like have something to drink, didn't she? Or a cup of tea when yeah. she talks about Did having Did she come her. back to Bath much after her father died? Because I think it was became a place of not yeah. happy memories for her. No, she, I don't think she came back yeah. very often at all. So we'll imagine Jane Austen in, in her youth, yes, mm-hmm. here, dancing the night away, wearing her slippers out. Because the <laughs> slippers used to be, have a sort of cardboard sole. Yes. So you would literally, like in the fairy tale, wear your slippers out. Wonderful. Um, so that's what they would have been doing in there. And with a full dance card, and then perhaps sit, sat down later on to watch some people play a game of cards or something. Yeah. Or perhaps a chaperone would have been in there while yes. she was out dancing under the chandeliers. Yeah. Okay. So those wearing out slippers in one evening does remind me of today's disposable fashion. Because mm. I think in almost every other context, the Regency era fashion was not disposable. You reused and refashioned and Good point. took things apart and put them together in different ways. Yes. And, and used everything to the absolute end of its life. But slippers, the exception. And it reminds me of nightclubs today, not that I go, but afterwards there are certain uh, helpers who wait and give young ladies flip-flops and things to wear yes. if they've lost their shoes so that they don't hurt their feet on the journey home. So they, Jane would have had a carriage or two. So she might she? have been there with a few flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at the very top of Bath at the end of our little morning tour. And we are at the Royal Crescent, which is a jaw-droppingly beautiful place with amazing views across the valley in which Bath finds itself. I think a large part of it is a big hotel in the middle, but um, we're standing outside number one Royal Crescent, which is a Regency museum set to how it would look in Jane Austen's day, so a great place to come. But we're surrounded by people on tours, (laughs) and in our What Would Jane Do? We were just wondering, is would Jane Austen enjoy a tour, or would she be giving it? Well, she knew the city well, didn't she? She did. I think she'd definitely get on top of one of the buses and go round and see all the different sites because for her it'd be so nostalgic. It'd bring yeah. back so many memories. But um, there are tours everywhere where you stop. There's another person giving a, an informed speech on the area. I think she would have been giving them. And she would have told you about some of the people and the you know, yeah. experiences she'd had, like racing off in a carriage down the hill or something. And So I think, you know, just to sort of finish our little visit here, um, it's really humbling to think that this woman, this unmarried woman from a period when that put you fairly low down the social pecking order, is now the celebrity of this city. Everywhere you go, um, lots of people come here because of her. Mm and they talk about her when they're here and they read her books and they watch the films made here. Mm. Uh, I think that, what would Jane do about that? I think she'd have to lie down to recover (laughs) for quite some time. But when she thought about it, I think she would really have enjoyed, in a tasteful sense, a celebrity all for life. I think she would have, Mm, it wasn't open to her at the time. They did lionise people like Byron and what have you, but Mm. there wasn't, the sort of way of meeting the fans that you can no. do now. I think she would really enjoy that. So she would be the keynote speaker, obviously. She would. And I'd certainly sell yes. all I had <laughs> to go <laughs> be in that would. audience. We all yeah. would, definitely. So we have a tradition of awarding mm-hmm. a, a Mr. Darcy and a Mr. Collins mm-hmm. um, of the podcast. So who is your Mr. Darcy of the week? Okay, this is very tricky. Hmm. So I think my Mr. Darcy is one of the team members involved in not only vaccination centre work in my local area, but they've now opened up the hotel as a refuge for uh, refugees from Afghanistan. And not only are they giving them hospitality and a safe place to gather and recuperate before they go on to their more permanent home here in this country, but also they're vaccinating them too. They are offering them the vaccination for COVID. So I think that is my Mr. Darcy. It's many of the Mr. Darcy's who, um, um, and Mrs. Darcy's who are, there, <laughs> who are there offering that support. It's just incredible. Yeah. So mine is also a Mrs. Darcy, who of course is Lizzie, <laughs> is that we're also speaking in the month in which Emma Raducanu went from obscure A-level student to winning the American Open. Well done her and her sportsmanship. Wonderful. What has since annoyed me is all the articles about how much money she's going to make. I just want to say well done for your sporting achievement and butt out everybody trying to turn her into a product. Exactly. Let her just be good at what she does. What about our Mr Collins? 
Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Collins? It's a very tricky one. Well, my Mr. Collins is mm. we also have a sort of bit of cautious opening up going yes. on, which has brought with it having to get properly dressed in the morning and put on <laughs> yes. makeup. Yes. So my Mr. Collins is like the return to being presentable. Yes. <laughs> and I know that, like, with back to school, for example, for me, yes, definitely have to wear, like, you know, professional clothes again out yeah. in the day and with the sweltering heat not been easy no <laughs> so i hope you've enjoyed our Practical very short one. stroll through bath yes. best come way to visit. yeah best way to see it is come here if you're at all possible uh, and thank you to the jane austen festival for inviting thank you very much uh, what would jane do podcast to their lovely city goodbye